So we're here with Andy from the Rifle Brigade Reenactment Group and he very kindly agreed to run through some uh, Crimean War era, I think it's fair to say, Rifle Brigade right. equipment. Yeah. Take it away Andy, please. Right, okay, well, um, might as well start with what I'm actually wearing here. Um, this is the, uh, the uniform of the Rifle Brigade at the beginning of the Crimean War. It's quite a dated uniform um, that was actually authorised in, in 1829 and was worn all, all through the 1830s. So by 1854 it really was looking quite dated with the extended epaulets, tight cut um, and the tails at the back. So it is a garment that is for looks rather than practicality um, you know, on a campaign. Um, so that's, that's the uniform. Uh, they're still being issued with the leather stock. Um, in the summer of 54, they were given permission to remove the stocks, but when they were on parade, they had to wear a stock of some kind, so it could be a cloth stock. Um, they were also issued with a shell jacket, which I have here. This is um, more of a practical thing to wear, um, but this would be for wearing when you're doing chores about the camp. So, much like the forage jacket of uh, earlier decades. Uh, should I start with the rifle? Please do, yes, that would okay. be good. Um, the British Army had gone over to, uh, well, the, the Rifle Brigade had gone over to a percussion weapon in 1839, which was the Brunswick, and looked very much like the Baker rifle, but had a percussion cap rather than the flintlock. Um, this again was changed, literally, as they went, as they boarded the ship out to the Crimea in, in early 54, they were given the Patton 51 uh, mini rifle. Um, and then that weapon again was changed for the Patton 53 Enfield in February 1855. And that is the weapon that you can see here. And that's, that's the, the weapon that we use when we do our displays. The 1853 Enfield. Yeah, that's right. So that is uh, a rifle musket. Um, so it's rifling, um, accurate up to a thousand yards, and um, percussion mechanism. Um, for the rifle regiments, still have a black sling, um, which uh, was worn loose. Uh, there's a socket bayonet, which um, goes on the end. Now, this weaponry was actually issued to the whole of the army. So the red coats received this as well. It's quite unusual for a rifle regiment to be suddenly given a long arm um, and they had to adapt their drill accordingly. Um, but they were issued with it because there wasn't a shorter equivalent of this weapon yet. That came after the war. And it was so it was far more accurate than the Brunswick. Um, the Brunswick was accurate up to 300 yards. So this was a better weapon for them to have, um, quicker to load, so it had many, many benefits, um, and they were just starting to come out of production, so it made, of, it made sense for the, for the rifle regiments to have the best weapon of that time, so they were issued with that. Uh, I'll start to look at some of the bits of kit. Um, the rifle regiments had always had a waist belt, from the, from the 95th times of the Napoleonic Wars. Um, so it's really pretty much unchanged. Um, they've still got the soft ball bag. Um, it originally had a, a leather Turk's head fastener, but they've gone on to a, a brass stud fastener now. Um, again, the only difference here is that you actually use that as an expense pouch, um, and you would transfer 10 cartridges from your cartridge box into your soft ball bag and also your caps are in there, your percussion caps and it makes it easier to load 
rather than trying to get your arm round to grab a cartridge from the pouch, you actually just take it out of your ball bag and you can load. And what you've got to bear in mind is that we're not always standing in line firing. The, the riflemen are often skirmishing ahead of the, the main force and may even be laying down loading. It's quite difficult with, uh, with a muzzle loader, but they did do it and they were trained to do that. And it also, so that makes it easier to get a cartridge out of there and load in that way. And when you use up your 10 cartridges, you get, you know, if you're running low, and there's a lull in the battle, then you'll you'll replenish it from your from your cartridge box. Um, this is again quite an old bit of kit issued in the, the 1840s. It's a, it's a large large box, held 60 rounds, um, and that is of the uh, the the, the bronze bit belted ball. Is a, is a big lead ball, and also the Mini A, the pattern 1851, has a big conical lead ball. So, big box to hold 60 rounds. Nearly all the kit was altered slightly halfway through the war. The uniform, the accoutrements, um, and the weapons as well. Um, still on a cross belt hangs directly at the back when you're not using it. If you're going into battle, you can pull that round slightly to make it more accessible. So we've done the waist belt, the bayonet, or sword, as the rifles call it, cartridge box, um, water canteen, holds two pints of water. These were issued during the Napoleonic Wars and slightly before. It's an old dated bit of kit. It's an oak keg. Um, if they're allowed to run dry, then they leak. So you keep water in them at all times. It's a heavy thing, but it's quite useful chopping your vegetables up, stuff like that. There's originals that have been found with knife marks on, on the front. Sometimes these will have a regimental number on them, but Loads of originals have been found and they've got nothing written on them at all. Sometimes a very crude scratching of someone's name in them. You've also got the haversack. And this would this is for your food. This is for three days rations. Um, these are only issued for field duty, the canteen and the haversack. So that doesn't mean necessarily foreign service, um, but if you're in barracks, um, you wouldn't need them. And e even marching to other barracks and stuff, a lot of this stuff could be carried on the baggage wagon. So it's only if you're really on field service that you'd be issued with the, with the canteen and the haversack. But this is what they had um, in the Crimea. Of course, uh, coarse linen, have a sack, simple thing, similar to the Napoleonic, different shape, but, you know, similar thing really. That would be quite grim. You get issue of raw, raw meat and biscuit, that all goes in there. Right, what else have we got? Knapsack. This is the box knapsack, so there is actually a timber frame in there. Um, nicely made, leather corners, built to last, um, not very comfortable. There's no chest strap anymore, it's just the two slings that go round your shoulders. Um, we've been wearing them today, they're not too bad, but I think if you're marching a long way, you'd know it's on your back, and especially um, if it's got all your gear in there. We've got the um, the great coat folded flat and fitted on the back. The rifle brigade didn't tend to go for the the older style of rolling the great coat and fixing it to the top of the knapsack. 
Um, I don't know what the reason is, but they seem to have gone for this way of fitting it flat on the back. Um, and you've got your mesh tin mounted on the top there. And you could keep bits of food in the mesh tin as well. Keep it quite cool because it's in a metal container. So if you had a bit of meat or something, it'd probably be a good place to keep it. Um, perhaps diff uh, separate from your biscuit and that kind of thing in your haversack. All your worldly belongings will be in that knapsack. Right, the headwear. This is the regimental cap, or Albert Shaco. It's the first Albert. There was a second Albert that was um, issued halfway through the Crimean War, but this is the, the first one um, that had been issued from the early 1840s. Um, it's sort of uh, similar to a top hat, really, and it perches quite high on, on your head. Very impractical uh, for going into battle with. Um, but it does give a certain amount of protection from, from the weather. It, a felted body, a leather top to it and the peaks. So if you're in the rain, then that will give you a certain amount of protection. Um, but it's very stylised, um, as I say, not, not very practical for going into battle. And as the guys went, into, uh, went to the Battle of the Alma, they actually threw these off as they went in, because it was an encumbrance that they could do without. Um, the, the hats that became much more popular during the war are the forage caps. Yeah, because the, um, because the Albert Shaco was so impractical, the guys tended to wear their forage caps most of the time. Um, but they obviously don't give you as good weather protection as that but it's more comfortable it's warmer um, and you know for most of the war one most of the time that they were sieging Sevastopol um, they're doing trench duty they would be wearing the forage cap just a few bits about kit I don't know if I can step to one side mm. um, yeah, gone are the gone are the gators of the Napoleonic Wars, um, and from the early 1820s, the guys were were issued with a with an ankle boot, and at that time, um, the gators weren't needed anymore. The trouble is with the stylized uniform, the trousers actually come right down to the heel, so it's the look of the time. It's again not practical to go into battle, so they tended to roll them up out the way, um, just for a practical reasons, really. I think that's about it, really. That's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Andy, for running through all that. Much all right. appreciated. All right, that's Cheers. Fine.